All right, guys, welcome to Thrower Tip Thursday. I want to go ahead and say uh, I'm sorry about last week. You know how finals can be in college, and if you don't, you'll find out. <laughs> uh, pretty crazy. I might not do one next week, but uh, I'm definitely going to keep these things coming. I just don't know uh, if I'm going to have time because these next two weeks are going to be pretty crazy for finals. But anyway, so what I've got for you today I'm um, going to go ahead and redo that uh, how to hold the discus thing because I've had a couple of you tell me that it kind of confused you, me having to draw. I'm sorry, I'm not a uh, not Picasso over here. I'm going to go ahead and redo that, clear up a couple things. I'm going to go over how to keep the discus wide and, and keep a, a, a pretty good orbit. And uh, we're going to have a, a cone, cone kick and drill for you. We also have got the nutrition bit that I've been telling you about. So that's all coming up right here. So this is a really, really lame analogy, but uh, whenever I, I tell it, whenever I'm trying to explain to uh, other throwers in person, it usually works. But what I'm relating the orbit to of the discus is I try to refer to uh, tetherball. Whenever you're in junior high and middle school, man, you used to love to play tetherball. You hit it, it goes around the pole. Man, that was the best. That was my favorite sport in, in I mean, other than football and track, <clears throat> of course. But so the tetherball, it's on a pole, and it goes around. It's a, it's a string with, a, basically, it's like a rubber ball. So you, you're trying to hit it, it goes around the pole. Great. So what I say is imagine grabbing onto that pole, and, and you're swinging it, right? You're swinging the pole so the ball's coming around. It's got to orbit. So swing the tether ball, and, and imagine this. You're wanting the ball to come that way. You're wanting to get the, the maximum power into the ball going in one direction, right? So what do you think? You think, okay, well, if it's spinning around like this, really tight, that ball will go pretty dang fast, right? Right. But the discus throw isn't like the hammer. You don't just spin around real fast and then throw it. While the same concept is you want to keep it out wide. But how do you do that? You want to keep it on the same plane. If you finish it where you start it, it'll be on the same orbit, or you can maybe get a little bit better orbit. So you have the tether ball pole, you swing it, that way. So that's the bond, that's the way your body has to move. So the orbit, when you swing it that way, the orbit comes around and you release it this way. So let's go ahead and show you that right now. All right, trying to move this along here. So we're trying to keep a wide orbit, right? So that means we're gonna have to come over to our left more, okay? Just like in the kick drill, remember we gotta come over to our left. Make sure we stay over our left with our upper body and let that right leg kick out because what, what we want to do is we want to kick this foot and aim it outwards towards the left so whenever we do this our left is or I mean our upper body is still over our left we're not leaning so much okay notice how my upper body is kind of centered over my left leg I'm leaning in with my right leg it's not leaning in without it it's not trailing okay so notice that my upper body is, is with my, my right leg, okay? Where my upper body goes, my right leg goes. They're connected. So shift that to the shift the upper body to the to the left, kick to the left. You are going to have to understand that you are kicking to the left. You are not letting that right leg come into the middle without getting off of that left leg, okay? Understand that right now. You're kicking to the left. You want to feel yourself coming over to the left as you kick off, as you get off of this back leg, okay? Whenever that happens, you'll stay on the same path because you your your body's leaning in this way and your right leg is counterbalancing to keep you on the same path. Now watch what happens. I'm kicking out this way and I'm getting off this left leg before my right leg crosses my body. I'm down the middle. I know I'm still having some trouble speeding up uh, too fast as I enter the ring. I get too excited to throw it. But um, let myself set up and keep the discus out wide again. So because I'm over to the left, the discus comes out wide. So it's come right here. And I want to keep it out as far as I can again. So keep it out about the same path. I want to say you have about this much leeway between how far your disc is out is out to the left uh, out well now it's your right but out to the left before you start having trouble 
So notice there is the depth perception where the discus is going to be seem a little bit wider now because we're closer and then a little bit, you know, further in this way because we're, you know, it, I'm further away from the camera. But anyways, so you're going to have about this much, maybe about half a foot to a foot gap before you start to lose that power from the lack of orbit, lack of radius in your throw. So like the tetherball analogy, you want to keep it out wide and throw it wide because that's that's the that's the down the right path you're going this way you're not coming uh that way or uh kind of you know you're not going to the other side of the ring and you're not going wide and then you got that thing going on i don't even know what the hell that is but that's what a lot of people come up with in their throws so stay the left keep to the left it gets you a lot more power into your throws and i i think if you guys play around with this concept and really understand that's how you come off. We went over that last week. Keep it out to the left. Get off of this left foot as you are kicking to the left. As soon as that passes your body, it's go time, man. You got to get off that foot. Don't watch video of yourself and see if that right leg crosses your body before this toe comes off the ground. My toe's off right about now. And, and I'm off. And I'm, I'm powering that sucker in there because I, I, I'm there in time. I don't have to wait. My left foot doesn't have to wait to come down before I can I can move it. A lot of you guys, you have to wait so long for that left to come down and you're, you're catching the discus about here to here and that left is just getting down. My foot's down and I'm moving, man. It, there's no pause. I'm going to go full. I'm going to go with the full, uh, the full throw and then a slow motion. Let's go in slow motion. See, there's no no pausing at all. No pausing. Keeping it out to the left. Getting off enough. Kick out to the left. Moving through the throw. Very effortless. Very effortless. These are slow throws and I don't have to try. Not trying at all. That's whenever you try too hard in these things, that's whenever bad things happen, man. It should all move fluid and, and, mo and effortless. Very easy. Alright, so this is my teammate Jeff. He's going to show us how we do the drill for the day. So this is the cone that we are going to kick. Use three extra arrows in case you had trouble seeing it. So what he's trying to do, just like we said, keep the knee out. And kick wide and get off so the point of this is as soon as you kick that cone get off that left that's your cue as soon as you feel that foot kick out wide make sure you put it about two to three feet out to make sure you get out wide enough as soon as you kick it that's when you come off the left foot and he does he, he waits a little bit longer than you, you need to so that way whenever you land you can catch it back so, let's watch his orbit. Fairly close. So, so this, this drill is doing really well for him. So let's kick out wide. Exact same thing I was talking about, but just put a cone there to make sure that's your cue to help you re remember, help you feel the time to come off that left foot. Because remember, there's, the, there's that delay there whenever you... Whenever you really want to come off that left foot, it's going to take some time. So you kick out right now, get off right now, still kick out to the left, remember? You don't ever let that right foot feel like it's coming in towards the middle. If you do, then it's, it's, it's wrong. It, it, doesn't, it should not feel that way. It should not ever feel like you're going into the ring. Because if you do that, you'll end up over here. And, and you'll be too late putting that left foot down. And where he puts his left foot down right here, you'd probably put it down right, uh, you know, right about here. And, and that's not a good place to catch the discus back to throw it. So one more time, kick out wide. Let your foot hit that cone. And when, as soon as it does, you need to start coming off this left foot. 
nice and easy, let it set up, don't try to rush it, let your feet sit down, and then follow through with the throw and it should be easy. Keep it out wide. That was way too fast. Okay, so keep it out wide. Don't let your body come this way. Keep the discus out wide. So this is an actual two kilo discus. Uh, someone was asking me where the thumb needs to be. It is completely irrelevant where the thumb is at. So here's what I have. What I have my 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 discus, my hand. And, and yeah, it's you know it's a two kilo because my hand's a really big hand and it's still not big enough to cover the whole thing. So what I'm saying is, whenever I, I line up my hand, it is just even with the center of the discus. The thumb does not matter where you put it, whatever makes you feel comfortable. I'd feel like this, it would stabilize it more, keeping it out wide like this. This would feel a little bit, you know, weaker. You don't have as much uh, control over it. So let's just say keep it out, okay? The rest of the fingers are completely irrelevant. I like to have mine closer, personally. I like, to, I mean, a lot of people, uh, both fingers completely together, taped up even. But it doesn't matter so much where you have these, these fingers, as long as the index finger is completely in the middle. You can't have it like this, because where's the discus going to come off of if the center of, of uh, release is the, along here? It's going to come off this finger. Make sure the pressure is on the index finger. So every time I wind up, I always kind of like squeeze my fingers a little bit more this way to make sure it comes off every single time. So that's a little thing uh, to kind of remind you whenever you're... you're about to wind up and get the discus ready, just slide the fingers on a little bit more this way. Alright guys, this is the end of the first part of week two of this workout. So, everything I need to tell you is just too much. I can't fit it on one video. At 15 minutes is just not enough time for me to tell you everything I want you to know. So, go ahead and check on my channel. Uh, the video is going to be on there. It's week two, part two. So, go ahead and check that out.